Welcome to Radio Arizona RV. This is episode number 14, and my name is Eric Stark, and today I'm going to be talking about propane and carbon monoxide protectors. You know, they're a, a safety item in an RV that sometimes they just go overlooked. No one pays close attention to them if it stops working. The natural course is to take the batteries out or disconnect it so you don't have to deal with it because it seems like it's a hassle. Well, these two items are very important to the safety of yourself and your family or possibly relatives and friends, depending on who's RVing with you. Since 1996, it was required by law that all RVs had a propane leak detector on them. And in 2005, it became a law requiring that all RVs had a carbon monoxide protector put in them. And that's new RVs. So if it was a if an RV was already built, it would have one or the other, or possibly neither, depending on the age of it. So today, when you go buy a new RV, it's going to have both in there. That's a new RV, not necessarily a used one. And that's something you want to do. When you go to the dealership, if you're buying a used RV, not only do you want to make sure that both of them are working, but that it has both of them, a propane and carbon monoxide detector. You should have both. And if it's approximately five years old, have the dealership replace it or four years old, or maybe it's past five. It'll have an expiration date on it. It's, these are two safety items that you should not overlook or neglect, think that they're not important. And all of these, or both of these products have a limited life. They're not gonna last for 10 years. They're designed to last for five years. That's their expiration. And when they expire, they'll set off a different beeping sound it's not the same as an alarm, like if there was a leak. So it'll sound a little bit different. So you want to make sure that your RV, whether it's new or used, has functioning LP and carbon monoxide protectors on them. It's important to do that and make sure that they're not disabled or the batteries are dead. Make sure they're working. You know, both of these detectors can save your life, the life of your family. And there's variable sources where you can have um, leaks, whether it's carbon monoxide or propane. You know, potential sources of carbon monoxide could include engine exhaust, portable grills, portable space heaters, campfires, gas stoves and ovens, defective engines, portable generators, exhaust systems, and generator exhaust. So carbon monoxide poisoning can lead to death. So it's, it's not something we want to not take serious. Set it on the back shelf or the back burner and not worry about it if our carbon monoxide leak detector is not functioning properly. Then potential sources of LP gas leaks include RV stovetop burners, refrigerator, oven, furnace, water heater, and other propane appliances that you might have in the RV or outside of it. You know, with propane leaks, generally it's going to be a fitting you know, it might be on a, a portable furnace or a portable heater, a catalytic heater. Maybe you didn't tighten the fitting all the way, or maybe from moving it around, the fitting has loosened up. But quite often, you'll find a leak at the front of the RV or near the propane tanks with the regulator or the lines going to the regulator. If it's a motorhome, you might just have one line going to the regulator to the tank. If it's a trailer or fifth wheel, you'll have two lines. And generally, that's where you find the leaks, at the lines by the propane tanks and now that's not something golden you can't just rely on that so you know please if you have a leak you know check the entire rv you don't want to just replace a line thinking you've solved the problem remember propane in its natural state you can't smell but it has an odorant added to it so you can smell it but don't rely on that method you know as people get older their bodies change, things change, and the sense of smell might not be what it used to. So you might not even be able to smell it, and you could have a leak. So rely on that propane detector, the propane leak detector, not your nose or your or your wife's nose or your spouse's nose. And, you know, carbon monoxide the same way. It doesn't have an odor. It's odorless, so you can't smell it. But there are signs of carbon monoxide poisoning that you'd want to be aware of if you're, if you're starting to fill these. You'd want to take action. You know, if carbon... Or, Carbon monoxide poisoning, the symptoms are similar to flu and can, and can include headache, fatigue, shortness of breath, nausea, and dizziness. So if you're in your RV and you start feeling that way, you know, you might have a carbon monoxide leak. So 
that's where you want to rely on that detector and make sure it's working properly. If it's not working, it's not going to detect the leak. So these things are very important. You want to take them seriously. So if you're buying a used RV, make sure that these these two devices work, or if there are two in one, where both detectors are in one, make sure that they work and that they're not close to the exp expiration date. If the dealership won't replace it at that time, make sure you pay attention to it and replace it when that date comes up. Mark it on your calendar. Even if you buy a new RV, don't just assume they're going to work. Test them. Both of these devices have a way to be tested. It's just pressing a button to make sure it works. You can take the batteries out, look at the date on the batteries, if they have batteries, or if it's hardwired in, then you have to make sure that your 12-volt system is functioning, but test them. Don't rely on your nose or how you feel. You know, don't wait to, for the symptoms to start before you start thinking about this. So I just wanted to bring that up. It's a good reminder. I know people come into our store wanting to replace them, and sometimes because of the money, they say, I'll pass, I'll wait, maybe next month, because sometimes these are expensive or they the initial purchase is expensive it might be 150 dollars might be 100 bucks but really when you look at that over a five-year period you know and possibly saving your life in that five-year period warning you of a dangerous situation in your rv i think it's worth the money 150 dollars really isn't that much over five years think about the kind of money that's spent just on rving in general you know we can afford a lot of other things you know, meals out, little day trips. Just make this part of the budget. Look at it as just part of the experience. It's part of what you do when you RV. You have to keep the maintenance up. You maintain the oil in your engine. You maintain the wheel bearings on your trailer. You maintain the rubber roof. This is just part of maintenance. This is part of the experience, the experience of owning an RV. It's not a negative thing. It's actually a positive thing because it gives you peace of mind. The two things you don't need to worry about. And if the alarm goes off and you, you hear it, then you just take action. You figure out where the problem's coming from. And if you can't do it on your own, just take it to a, a good RV service center, and they should be able to take care of the leak or the carbon dioxide issue, whatever it might be. Don't set it on the back burner. Make sure you check them out. Make sure they're working properly. So I want to thank you for listening to this episode of Radio Arizona RV. This is rep episode number 14. So you can check us out on the web at www.radioarizonarv.com or you can call us with questions, comments, whatever it might be at 800-789-5588. And again, my name is Eric Stark. Thank you.